Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Fallout The Rezzer and welcome back to my apocalypse. Today we are talking about the future of Fallout and what we might expect in future Fallout games. The Fallout TV show and the new Fallout 4 update has caused Fallout to become quite popular, meaning that we might get a new Fallout game sooner than expected. What I mean by this is that Microsoft wants a new Fallout game as soon as possible. However, Bethesda is working on Elder Scrolls 6 because there hasn't been a new Elder Scrolls game in quite some time, so the new Fallout game is probably going to be sent off to another company to work on. And in my opinion, and many others' opinion, it's probably going to be Obsidian, because they already have experience working on a Fallout game, as well as many people want to fall in New Vegas too. This leaves us with a good idea of where it's going to be, but it could still be somewhere else. So let's get to talking about it. First of all, I'm going to say something controversial. While I like the Brotherhood of Steel and I like the opposition they give to other factions, if it's the NCR, the Enclave, or the new factions being the Institute or Railroad, the fact is that they've been in every single Fallout game since 1997, which is the first time Fallout was introduced to the world. They've been a main faction in Fallout 1, a small faction in Fallout 2, a main faction in Fallout Tactics, a main faction in Fallout 3, a side faction in Fallout New Vegas, and a main faction in Fallout 4. I get they're a popular faction, but maybe lay off them for a while. I mean, that's quite ridiculous. So maybe we should have the very first Fallout game without the Brotherhood of Steel in it. There can still be like a reference to them, like a suit of power armor that you have to go scavenge for, or maybe like a laser rifle that has origins in the Brotherhood, or maybe just a small reference to them in a terminal or note or something, but lay off them for a while. I mean, there legitimately has not been a single Fallout game without the Brotherhood of Steel in it. That's just milking them for content, and it's it's ridiculous, Bethesda, come on now. And the complete opposite of my opinion on the Brotherhood of Steel is the Enclave. I think we should see much more of the Enclave. Maybe not in every single Fallout game after this one, but maybe in a few more. Like, we have not gotten the Enclave as a major faction since Fallout 3, which was in 2008. I was two at that time, so that's kinda weird. I know there's only been two Fallout games since then, but I mean, they're one of the most popular factions and we couldn't even join them in Fallout 3. And so that really just leaves Fallout 2, which was in 1998. And the reason I'm so inquisitive about it now is because of the mod America Rising 2. It really opens up some questions that we should be asking the makers of Fallout, such as, this is the United States of America, so does it have a functioning government? Is there a president, senators, congresspeople, some kind of civilization with some civilians and citizens. We just have no idea what it's about, and I find that kind of strange in a faction that many people regard as one of the best, if not the best. And while I'm not saying they're the best, or they're not good, or they're bad, or they're okay, I'd like to know a lot more about them for many reasons, so I can produce content for you all, and so I can just get that itch out of my head of wondering what they're about, I'd like to know more about them in multiple senses. And instead of four factions to end the game this time, maybe we have three, where there's two smaller factions, but there are still main factions, and one bigger faction that alone can destroy the two smaller factions. However, if you want to win with one of the two smaller factions, you have to team up with the other small faction to defeat the larger faction. That's just an idea I had, but you know, something along those lines. When it comes to the location of the next Fallout game, as I said earlier, we might be getting a Fallout New Vegas 2, so it would obviously take place in Nevada slash California. However, if it's just going to be Fallout 5, or a different spin-off of Fallout, then we might get somewhere completely different. In every single Fallout game, we've had somewhere on the east or the west coast, so maybe somewhere a little different for the base game, such as maybe the north, the south, the midwest where Joshua Graham is from and the Canaanites in Utah, something like that. For example, I would love to see what's going on in Canada, because we have gotten reference to somewhere called Ronto, which is obviously based off of Toronto, which is a place in Canada. I'm not really sure, I'm from the US. We can get a DLC further up north to see what's going on there, or maybe we can have it in the south, where we have a follow game in Texas, because everything is bigger in Texas, we might finally get that 50 foot ghoul. And to get a DLC, we're gonna go down to Mexico. There's so much to go with here that I think we should actually explore more in the central United States, instead of just the east or the west coast. When it comes to equipment in Fallout, meaning armor and weapons, I think Bethesda and Obsidian handled it decently well, except in Fallout 4. But what I'm talking about is the legendary effects. 
The fact that you can just get a random legendary weapon and it could be more powerful than any other weapon of the game seems a little skewed to me. I know some people liked it, but in my personal opinion, I did not. I like how you had to get unique weapons from Quest, Dialogue, or Barter Trades. This made it so that you would have to rely on NPCs to get what you wanted, so you wouldn't just go spray and pray everyone in the city. But to be fair, it is fun to customize and name your own legendary weapons that you find throughout the Commonwealth. However, sometimes they can be absolutely terrible, or just not useful for the playthrough that you're going for, or not useful at all. So that's usually why I don't like them. But I couldn't talk about equipment in Fallout if I didn't talk about power armor. They'll probably keep it the same like they did in Fallout 4 and 76, because the Fallout show portrays it as it was in Fallout 4 and 76, so that should remain consistent from now on. Instead of going from no requirements in Fallout 1 and 2, to power armor training in Fallout 3 in New Vegas, to needing a fusion core in Fallout 4 and 76. Also, the last thing about equipment, they had a customization to weapons and armor so you can make them better in Fallout 4, but did not have them in Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3. Well, they did have mods in Fallout New Vegas, but you'd have to purchase that for a very steep price. And no one was really against the customizations in Fallout 4, so I doubt they will remove that. Whether or not you like Fallout 4, or if you're its biggest hater, one thing that you do have to admit is that its gameplay is the best of the Fallout series. That's because it is the newest Fallout game besides Fallout 76, but 76 is the basic copy of Fallout 4 just online when it comes to gameplay. So with the next Fallout game, I do not believe we have anything to worry about when it comes to gameplay. If anything, it will probably be better. This is the only category that I have complete faith will be alright, but I have been wrong before and will probably be wrong in the future. Also, we should at least give Bethesda a chance to mess this up. It's only 2024, where gameplay is the most important thing in a game nowadays, so we should see what Bethesda is prepared to do. And on the topic of quests, what I would have to mention is for the miscellaneous quests, we should probably keep it with how Fallout 4 did it. With Fallout 3 in New Vegas, it made it difficult with just giving you a note, and then being marked under unnamed quests. But miscellaneous quests could be made into bigger quests, or just a marker into something bigger. Let's hope Bethesda puts the attention to detail back into Fallout, in a way we can all appreciate, in the sense that references have been in the Fallout game ever since 1997. What I do hope they add back in the next Fallout game is the brutality of Fallout 1 and 2. Fallout's grim and dark nature is what made it popular in the first place. So a return to those roots, in my opinion, would probably be a benefit to the old players of Fallout, and even to some of the new players as well. So in conclusion, I want what many of you all probably want as well, what is best for Fallout, and its community, and the makers of Fallout, and Bethesda itself. With Fallout's recent popularity, I believe there was a great chance Bethesda will put a lot of time, effort, and more importantly, money into the next Fallout game. But unfortunately, there is only really one way to see, and that's probably going to be a few years from now. But don't go just yet, because I have a special announcement for this channel. By the time I upload this, I have around 374 subscribers for this channel. Now, I have a special video lined up for our next milestone, which would be 1,000 subscribers. Now, I know that's pretty far away, but I think you all can do it. And you all might be asking, what is this special video that we might want to see? Well, for every single milestone from now on that we make on this channel, I will be releasing a what if for the Fallout series that could have drastic changes in Fallout. If you want to see these alternate Fallout history videos on the what ifs of Fallout, then make sure to subscribe and like this video and share this with all your friends. I have been working on that video for quite a while now, and by the way it's looking, it might turn into a two-parter. But just make sure to like, subscribe, and comment what you thought of this video down in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching, and remember, war, war never changes. I see you looking round the corner. Come on inside and pull up a chair. No need to feel like a stranger cause we're all a little strange in here have you got a history that needs so, racing you've been pulling your weight at the barricades did you come in just for the beer